Hi guys, welcome to PyJango Tutorials. So as you know, in the last video, we have set up a basic project and I've shown you how you can set up Django channels at your system, especially if it is a Windows system, because in Windows, it is a little bit complex process, not that difficult, but uh, somewhat complex other than Linux and Mac. In Mac and Linux, it would be easy for you to set up Redis, but in Windows, you have to install WSL and do some extra configuration as well. So I hope in everybody's system, Django channels and Redis is installed and we are on the same page. If not, you can uh, leave the comment and I'll make sure to connect with you personally if possible over Telegram or any other uh, means possible and we can sort those things out. But as of this video, I've told you that we'll continue officially from the coding part. So in this video, we'll set up a basic uh, model or our custom user model where user can register with email and their first name and last name and all those sort of things. So we'll set up a, a custom user manager for permissions and we'll set up everything on our own. And we'll also set up a custom user model where we will log in through email and not from username because in Django's default user model, you have to register. You have to log in through username, not email. So we'll configure that as well. So the very first thing we'll do is create an app that will sort of work with all our authentication system. So it will be dedicated to our auth authentication and authorization. So I'll come in my terminal and I'll do the back and I guess, yes, can go dash admin start app. I'm going to name it accounts. I hope accounts app is created. Yes, here it is. And in our model, the very first thing I'll do is make all the imports. Uh, Django.db could not resolve. Let me just check why this is showing this. Um, Django, okay. It is not recognizing Django in my virtual environment. So let me make sure my virtual environment is active. Yep. Or let me install Django. Okay, for some reason, Django wasn't installed in my PC. I don't know why, it's strange. Okay, now it is, and I guess now it should be identified. Yes, okay. So that yellow line that is when it's gone. Okay, now I can do from models. I guess. We have to import abstract base user, base user manager, and permission mixer. Yeah, these are the things we need uh, to sort of create our own custom user model. So we'll inherit our user class from this to configure it to make it customize and we'll use base user manager to deal with our own custom permissions and all those sort of things uh, you can obviously read about all these things in uh, django official documentation but this is basically we are configuring our own user model and we are not using django's built-in or default user model so now like, i'll create a class i'll name it user uh, let's name it user manager and i'll inherit it from base user manager after inheriting i can create the first thing i can do if uh let's say i can first thing i can do is create a user so i'll uh, create one function create a user and i can take self email password by default i will take as none and if any extra fields i need so i'm going to just name it uh keyword argument as extra fields yeah that's fine so first thing i'll check if email is not present so if not email so i'll simply raise a value error and i'll name it as uh, users um, or user must have an email address another thing i can do if this is not the case then i'll get email from self dot normalize email and i'll pass email here so this is basically verifies that email is in a valid form and all those sort of things and then i'll get the user from self dot model and i'll give email equals to email and pass on extra fields here extra fields or i will name it as extra fields now i'll set the password for this user so user dot uh it should be user dot set password i guess and i'll pass on the password here and last thing i want to save this user so user dot save using uh, self dot db self dot db and self dot under this is protected variable so self dot db and then i'll return user now this is we are creating user normal user now we'll implement our own function to register a super user so in super user it will take self email again password i'll take default value as none and then any extra field if we need so extra fields and again we'll do extra fields dot set 
uh, default and we'll set default that is is star remember in uh, basic or inbuilt user model we have this variable called is star so for our super user we'll set it to true and same thing we'll do with uh, our uh, another variable called uh, is super user so i'll set this as well to true and then i'll simply call in my self dot uh, sorry return self dot create user create user that means this function so I'll, I'll in case of super user i'm just setting some extra permissions and then i'll simply call this function to register this so i'll pass on email password equals to uh, simply password and uh, extra fields okay now we're good to go so our basic user manager is completed now the other thing we need is to register our user or to get information from the user form and register it so we can do or create our own class and inherit it from abstract base user and permissions mix in and first thing we'll do is create an email field and we'll do models dot uh, email field this will be unique sorry then we'll take first name this will be care field and max length i'll give as uh, 100 that would be fine i'll just give it a standard one of 255 blank equals to true and last underscore name will give as models dot care field and uh, max length will be again standard one and blank i'll give true then we need yeah then we need some other parameters as well so we'll take uh is active and we'll set it models dot uh boolean field and default will be true then is staff or yeah is staff models dot this also will be boolean field and this will be false then we'll have a uh, date joined this will be models dot date time field and we'll set auto now add equals to true to automatically add that particular time and then we'll create a object of our user manager class so object of user manager and we'll set our user sorry user name underscore field email so this particular line is actually telling that we want our email field as the username field while we are logging and not our username because i don't have any field as username so i'll be using email only to register uh, sorry to log in the website then we can uh, uh, define some other functions as well like let's say someone wants to get a full name so we can say uh, get full name and we can get it as return we can return it as a string and we can say self dot first name space self dot last name similarly we can return uh, just first name or uh, the last name uh, but i'll simply uh, give a string representation or str function and i'll return a uh, user's email whenever this object is represented somewhere so i'll represent it with the name uh, email of the user so our basic user model is now complete so that's all we have to do to customize our user model it is completed now while we are here we can uh, at this time only uh, create our serializer as well so i'll come in here and i'll serializers.py yeah so if you don't know what serializers are so basically in django rest framework if you want to convert something from python native data types native data types are such as uh, which are supported in python such as list tuples or uh, python dictionary or a set and these kinds of things if you want to convert any data any data from these data types to uh, json or xml or any data type that is understood by a front end uh, then we use a concept called serialize so we use the uh, rest frameworks power to serialize or to convert this data from native data types to another format whatever format we need so this process is called serializing and we'll, we'll uh, i'll show you how we can do that and, and just the reverse of it is called deserialization so suppose you uh, receive data in a json format and you want to convert that data into python native data types such as dictionary very common example then you can use the process of deserialization as well so this is Django rest framework providing you you don't have to do the, any of this on your own you just have to use their functions use their classes and that's how and that's how easy it is so we use Django rest frameworks power only so first thing we can do is like uh, we can create a serializer, a basic serializer. So I'll say from REST framework. Okay, REST framework is also not installed in my system. So let's do that. 
install Django REST framework. Okay. Now I can do from REST. Oh, it is not coming. So let me just get up a command from Google. Django REST framework. Give it a moment. <laughs> okay, I'll get it from official documentation. Okay, I'll go to quick start and then quick start. Okay, so it's Django REST framework. Now I have to register it in my installed apps. So let's do that as well. Okay. That's all. Okay. So I think command was correct, but let me just reassure it. Yeah. So now if I come back here and do from REST framework, yes import uh, serializers and we will be using user models so from django.contrib.auth import get user model and we can create a serializer class so from user serializer we will use serializer start model serializer so basically there are a bunch of ways to serialize something to serialize any particular data now you can take example of forms just in forms you can create forms from uh, as, as your custom form or you can use the fields from the, your model and create a form directly so for that we are using forms model form similarly when you want to create a serializer out of your models only all you can do is serializer start model serializer that's how easy it is so that's what we are doing here and for my particular field serializers dot care field and i will give it as write only equals to true not true true now i can create this function create and in the validated data this particular variable this is basically a dictionary and in this i have access to all the data that is passed to this serializer so what i can do instead of returning here i can do user equals to get user model and we can say get user model dot objects dot create user so this basically we are talking about this function here this create user and things that we want to pass are email very first thing email equals to validated data and we will receive email as key so we'll make sure that we send email as a key from front end to this particular serializer and then we need password and password will be validated data password then our first name that also will be equal to validated data. And this will be first name. Or we can also make sure that if, if someone wants that, they should not enter their first name. So we can make this field as optional. So because we are making this optional, we can use get method in a dictionary to give key as first name. And if it is not there, we'll give a default value of empty string. Just this is just uh, extra check I'm requiring because if I use this uh, syntax, then I will get key error if the key is not present in the dictionary. But this won't give me any key error. This will simply look for the first name key in the dictionary. If it is not present, it will assign a empty string value to that particular key. So similarly, I'll get last name equals to validated data dot get and key will be last name and empty string. Now I'll simply return user. That's all. So our serializer is complete. Uh, other thing we can do is define a class called meta or metadata of this model. So we can say model equals to get user model and fields equals to, we can set all the fields here. So this will be email, uh, password, uh, then first name, similarly, last name and extra keyword arguments can be a r c s can be uh, similarly password we want this field to be right only this is now our serializer is also complete so all the things from back end are pretty much done so in the next video we'll uh, create our form in the front end in React.js and as I mentioned in the last video that will rely heavily on our uh, material UI or material UI library. So we'll use inbuilt components such as text field and buttons and all these sort of things. We'll not design any form from our, uh, on our own. 
we'll use those things only. And after the form is created, we'll create one endpoint here to accept that data and create uh, or register the user using this particular serializer. So this will continue in the next video. So one, once again, thank you so much for watching. And please guys, do like, share and subscribe and share it as much as possible. And if you don't understand anything, please make sure to uh, comment in the comment section or ping me directly in the Telegram. Uh, I'll make sure that I see those messages. Uh, there are so many of you who are already messaging me, but uh, somehow I missed those out. So I'm extremely sorry for that. But once again, thank you so much for watching guys and hopefully you'll like, share and subscribe. Okay, see you in the next video. Thanks.